Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the July 17th, 2024, Worcester Township Board of Supervisors Workshop Meeting. Would you please join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance? My name is Rick Delello. I'm the chairman of the board. To my left is Lou Betts, who's our vice chair. To my right is Steve Quigley, our third member. Over on the side table, we have Devin Ralph here uh, representing our solicitor. Wendy McKenna is unavailable tonight, so Devin is sitting in with us. Uh, next to Devin, we have John Everts, who's our township engineer. On the back table, we have Christian Jones, who is our assistant township manager. And we have Jay Finnegan, who is our interim township manager. Uh, first and foremost, does anybody have any informational items for the board relative to our work session tonight? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a note that this meeting is being video recorded for future broadcast. Thank you, Jay. First item on the agenda is public comment. We do ask that you limit your public comment to five minutes. Does anybody have any public comment for the board relative to the work session tonight? Seeing none, we'll move on. So we um. So our work session topic tonight, guys, uh, we talked a little bit last month about some zoning um, sort of amendments that we were contemplating considering we had talked about passing those over to the Planning Commission. Uh, the Planning Commission then received those items and sent them back to us to ask us to uh, pull together a, a more complete draft ordinance for them to actually evaluate as opposed to letting them sort of build the ordinance from their end. They want us to provide a little more direction um, and pull together draft ordinances for any changes we might want to make and then send it back to them so they can evaluate that. So um, we have in our packets, I guess it's tab, I don't know if it's labeled, It'll be tab B, um, starts with a memo from Jay, there were really sort of three areas that we talked about in our meeting last month. There was, um, there were accessory structures, there were fences, and there were signs. Those are sort of the three areas that we covered. And I thought um, my idea was we'd carve that up a little bit, see if we can start with items that perhaps are, um, I don't wanna say simple, but more direct and agreeable and then work our way down to stuff that's maybe a little bit more complicated. Um, it, as an example, we had talked about um, our fence ordinance currently has a maximum height restriction in residential areas of five feet. And Supervisor Betts had actually mentioned um, multiple times over the last few months about a desire to move that to six feet in all districts. Um, as a change that he thought made sense. He felt like he was running into uh, multiple scenarios where residents were finding they needed to go for zoning relief um, because they wanted a six foot privacy fence, which is a fairly standard uh, height for a privacy fence these days. And it didn't seem to make sense to require a full sort of um, zoning application for that. Is that about right, Lou, or is there more to that? As far as the fence is concerned, yes. Hang on. As far as the fence is concerned, apparently it was six, and Christian will confirm this, it was six. We Somewhere along the line, it got moved to five. Um, six seems to be a comfortable height. Uh, instead of everybody going to the zoning board every time somebody wants to put a fence up for privacy. So I think as far as the fence is concerned, that one's a simple one. And it's open, I believe it's, this is discussion, so yeah. we're not passing anything, we're just discussing it. So. Um, I'll take any, any feedback input on anybody, but um, it, it was six foot. And for whatever reason, and I don't recall when, but I mean, I think that's an acceptable, unoffensive partition between two neighbors for dogs or whatever privacy. Right. Any other feedback? Right. So, so mechanically, what will happen, Lou, is, is to your question, we're not passing anything tonight. What we would look to do is to instruct Devin and the solicitor's office to then draft the 
amendment changes that then would go over to the planning commission that they would evaluate and to give us their feedback. So it's a little bit of back and forth there, but we're just sort of trying to get like that one to your point. Uh, you know, I think it's a reasonable text amendment to say, hey, we want them to evaluate six feet. You know, we think it should go in every district so that they can look at it and say, well, no, we should avoid X, Y, or Z, or there's some um, variation. To your point, I don't think it's a significant change in that regard. But the other thing, I guess, to consider is whether we want anything other fence-related associated with it. Like, so in the, in the memo we have, if you, uh, we talked about six feet as being something, if you had Right now, there's a certain number of feet off the property line, whether you wanted to consider um, a scenario where you might have a, an ability for neighbors to agree, you know, to put something on a property line. Right now, we have a certain number of feet that um, whether or not we think there's any specific need to change that. And then types of fences, uh, I, I think with the exception of chain link, we allow a lot. Um, chain link is sort of the one that we don't. Um, I don't personally have a desire to open up chain link fences to all districts or any districts, frankly, but you know, that's sort of the one, if there were, um, if there were areas we thought that needed to be tweaked or adjusted, and then just some of the setbacks, you know, you have front yard, side yard, and, and rear yard. Many fences are typically rear yard and side yard related items. Right now, I don't, we don't really have much, uh, there isn't much in terms of front. So I don't know if we have any thoughts um, to whether those should even be tackled, you know, whether there's some interest in doing that, but that would be certainly something we could um, factor into any draft that then the planning commission would review. I just want to add that in the past, there's been a resident who, they, they put a post and rail fence. Now you can call it a fence, but it's more of a decoration it's in front of the yard for the, the rural look and the setback on it. I don't recall actual, but it was, I mean, it sits back pretty far. I don't want to say 20 feet. I don't know exactly, but if people want to put it closer to the road, I got it you're, you're within the right of way and ultimate right of way. And there's some rules to this, but, um, and again, Worcester is too diverse. It's kind of like if you're on a side road versus a main road, there's a, there's gotta be a set of guidelines so we can, well, not right. everybody goes to zoning because I want to put a fence within five feet versus 10 feet. Well, and that's where we're saying, okay, if we go to, if we look at certain districts, are there certain districts that might lend themselves to a different setback for a front yard or a side side yard resident? I mean, that's sort of some of the, the thought processes. It sounds like you're saying we want to be a little bit more, um, it needs work, a little bit more inclusive in terms of saying if somebody wants to be able to do that, then our ordinance sort of gives them a little bit of room to work with without, um, a little more common sense to it, it, it's one size doesn't fit all in Worcester, so uh, it just needs a, a little bit of a I want to say overhaul, but a little more of a different districts, different zonings, different setbacks for different areas. I mean, it's it's right. One size doesn't fit all. I'd like some Steve input because you know I'm sure the farm has a number of fences on it. They got a the cows in, right? Lou, I think as you stated, you know, going to the zoning hearing board and asking those fellows what are some of the problems that they reoccur there, and the fences have been a, an ongoing problem. That we try to eliminate that by, you know, increasing it by a foot to, you know, once again, it comes back to just trying to do the work with the people in the township. You know, when you have a home four feet. Sometimes just doesn't work. Um, so we're just trying to work through some of these problems and ease the, maybe the stress, take some of the things away from the zoning hearing board. So uh, I agree with what you said. I think we're all, Devin, we're all, and again, just from a, a note standpoint, we need, we think the six foot is a fairly straightforward and simple one. We do think that there should be a little bit of look at some of the setbacks to see if perhaps there is, um, if there's some room to work there. And I think that would need to be a little bit more on a district by district basis, but give a little bit more with, with, with the end goal, really trying to just get to a point where barring some significant um, construction effort on, on the part of a homeowner, you're not, hey, we just want to put a fence in our backyard. So. I know five feet at one point 
was tied to swimming pools where there's that's the required um, state, high, law. state law for for swimming pools that's kind of where five feet came from at one point um, but six feet is certainly um, I don't think that's unreasonable you do occasionally run into I know in my community we have five feet as an HOA which supersedes the township ordinance which I think is fine that doesn't you know that's sort of a community based like it's um, we have a specific fence ordinance built into our HOA, like into our bylaws. Now we still have to defer to township zoning. If the township zoning were more restrictive than that, we'd have to honor the township zoning, but ultimately, and if communities have that, then they have to sort of abide by the community, but that's obviously not gonna impact other neighborhoods other than our own. Okay. The other one I thought that was reasonably straightforward, if you will, we can talk about fences. Again, I just want to be respective of our sort of our clock um, was signs um, and signs is it, the issue that got raised that we talked a little bit about is the notion of an internally illuminated sign. Uh, and uh, the township has a couple. Um, for a long time, there was the notion and if you wanted to illuminate it, it needed to be what we call an external source. So you basically had a spotlight that pointed to the sign. That was sort of the mechanism for forever. Um, and the way the technology has evolved and the way, and the concern was light pollution, you know, the notion that you'd have too many um, popping up. But, but I, I certainly know from my perspective, the way the technology has advanced, it's actually in many cases less light pollution with an internally illuminated sign than it is using external lighting sources. So, but the question that got raised saying, well, the first question is, do we think it's a should? You know, should we look to open up the sign ordinance um, to allow for that? And yes. The, okay. The, and then the secondary would be where? You know, if, there, if we'd want to be restrictive in terms of, um, if we said, yeah, we think that's a, a, an idea worth considering, then would you want to then, uh, and, and I say yes too, by the way, just, you know, in terms, of, I think it's certainly worth that discussion. Um, but I also think you have to give some thought to saying which districts, you know, commercial only, places that have retail establishments versus residential neighborhoods. You know, there, I think there is a line there. Like, I don't know that we want um, capabilities in every community across the township, so. Steve, your thoughts? Well, you certainly know it's been brought up at the meeting enough. I'm, the, I'm one of the guilty parties with illuminated signs, so that, that's no secret. But, you know, I, I think modern technology has changed, and as you drive around the township, there's a number of churches that have lights shining on their signs that are really blinding, and it's technology has changed, and I think it's time for Worcester to catch up to the uh, the less pollution that our existing side ordinance, sign ordinance dictates that the township have. So I think it's a, a right uh, move, uh, A, from modern technology and B, pollution. Uh, it's blinding sometimes. I don't want to point out the properties, but if you drive up and down Valley Forge Road sometimes, there's some large institutions that have signs that you come around the bend, it's blinding and it really distracts you from the, the driving. So I, I think the, the item the signed ordinance should move forward. So just to follow up on a comment, Worcester has had internally eliminated signs for 40 years, maybe longer. So this is nothing new. And selective enforcement for the years and years and years. So yes, I want to agree that we got a modern with what's good for everybody so if it's the commercial we have a number of internally limited signs so in the commercial district yes i think it's moving forward i think the fire department should have one i mean they're exempt anyway and i think the school is also so i, I don't know all the technical and i would refer to a legal. yeah we certainly are exempt i don't i, just, I don't know whether the fire department and the um it's part of the fire department i mean that's township property so we're, we're a stretch but Again, I yeah. want to include. What I'm, I hear what you're saying. Move forward. I mean, the fire department, yep. number of fire departments up and down Germantown Pike have 
And again, it's for information for uh, storms or for uh, any emergency service. Uh, the school, I believe, would be in any, uh, we have two schools in Worcester, right? Yep. Worcester Elementary and the McFacken School District. And I believe, again, modern up for that. So in the commercial district, now you have a lot of, now you got the other problem is you got a lot of non conforming existing commercial type. Sure. So now you got to start filling in a little bit of blanks. And, uh, and it's about, then we have to uh, sure. use a little common sense on size. Now, again, I have two businesses and I know about signs, but uh, when you have a, a large, again, I'll use the dollar store for an example. I mean, that's a 9,000 square building. I mean, the sign's very small. It was restricted back in the day. It's got floodlights on it. They put all these big trees around it. You can't see the building. I mean, that's Montgomery County planning. Again, they have trees. I'm all for trees, but making them grow right in front of the building, I think, challenging because you can't see the business, but um, so much, there's so many square feet should be on a building, so many on a pole. It's been like that. We just need to adapt to modern. Um, okay. Mr. Chairman, something else uh, as Mr. Betts was talking, I think the board sits here and tries to take the common sense approach. We try to listen to the residents and try to do the best we can. Things come up, we try to do it. And I think in the past, I always think in the past that uh, if you wanted an illuminated sign before, you had to hire a certain architect in the township. And if you hired a certain architect, he'd do the plans for you and uh, it would get passed. And I, I've, I always had a problem with that. You know, I, I don't believe in that. I think it's fair is fair for everybody. And you look at that objectively. And I think that this board has done a good job in the past couple of years moving towards the, the fairness, I'll call it the fairness doctrine. So thank you. So Devin, I think there's a clear yes on internally illuminated signs um, broadly, but with some, you know, some areas that maybe don't make sense. Uh, the signage, the, the size, I think, I don't know what the size should be. I mean, as Lou's saying, um, we have sizes. It's, it's figured out. I know, but I, what I, let me finish. I'm sorry. What I was going to say is we would like that to be looked at to see if we need to tweak that to be more appropriate to modern times and, and areas. So we certainly, there's some, some interest. Like I, we don't want to just magically pick a number. I mean, but we think that there needs to be, that would be something that we'd certainly want to take a, a look at and see if there's some room. To, to your point, that you know that it's sort of proportional to just just a king of Prussia. That's that's the mall. So that's sign heaven. So they have. If you looked at their sign ordinance, you'll see that they have so many. I got linear feet per square footage of frontage. They have a decent set of guidelines, but again, they're like the sign expert because they got a million signs. Yep. So as a guidance, that's a good way to look at it. But again, Worcester's so diverse and different. We got to use a little common sense on this one. So. If you have a, a very small business, small lot, and you're not getting a 500 square foot sign, so, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll go back to once again. We in here in the sign ordinance, the athletic fields are addressed, and I don't, not sure how many nights I sat here, listened to the board sitting up here against the school district putting signs around the football fences. It didn't impede the traffic on any road. Nobody could see the signs unless they were really in the football stadium. And it was a way for the school to raise money, either the band or the football team or the soccer team or the track team. And I, I think it shows the backwardness of Worcester in the past by not allowing those signs there. And I think it has to be controlled, but you know, this is the vision that our township had in the past. And that's why I went back that if you wanted something done, you had to go to a certain person to get it done, which was wrong, but you couldn't address that. And uh, I think making these changes, we're going in the right direction to make it fair for everyone in the township. Thank you. So the one other point I wanna make on the signs and, and, I, and I maybe it's just a point of clarification is, so there's the internally illuminated, but there's also the digital signs in terms of, um, and I think we wanna, at a minimum, like you think in terms, you talked about the fire department, and I, in my head, I more envision a digital sign than internally illuminated, but just the mechanics of that. I, 
I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to make the distinction exactly, but are they viewed, Jay, are they considered two different things from a, okay. But, sure. So I need you to make sure you're green and then pull it to you. <laughs> move. Sorry there. I know the model sign ordinance from the county planning agency, they had different categories. So say, for example, LED lighting versus internally illuminated versus there was about 15 categories of different signs. Okay. So yes, and blinking lights. And so there's quite a bit to think about, unfortunately. So any, any more guidance would be, um, we can definitely pull some information for you and get it to you. Okay. I think we, I mean, I think there's interest in pursuing a few different ways to do that. And certainly the digital sign is just, it, it, it's easier to maintain for, you know, if, if we want, if the, if the fire department wanted to make a change quickly, you're able to do that without, you know, through an app, you know, everything happens computerized and technology makes it a lot easier to do. But definitely I think that's, we'd like to add that to the mix as well. Okay. Got it. And then um, the third item, which I guess is, to me is a little more challenging, is we had talked about um, accessory structures. And, and the recollection of it is what drove that initial conversation was, um, it had to do with sort of the, the, the height. The height, uh, the current height was one of the items. Um, but <laughs> I'm almost not quite sure where to start there. We're, we're one, it's easy enough to say, hey, we think that there should be a higher height or, you know, a couple of things. But when you, we don't have much in terms of definition in our current ordinance around accessory structures. We, we've le left it sort of largely open, if you will. Um, and then it sort of fell, you know, falls to maybe the zoning officer to make a determination. And then you have an issue if the zoning officer makes a determination that the resident doesn't care for. I mean, or, I mean, but I think there's, there might be some definable characteristics. We say, hey, the, the height should be, you know, 12 instead of 10 or 14 instead of 12. I, and again, I don't remember exactly what it is off the top of my head, but we don't have a lot of language in our accessory structure um, portion presently. So I don't know the perfect way to tackle that, uh, if you will, but why don't, I, why don't you toss in the couple of things that you had specifically? It started because a resident wants to put a garage up to put his motor home in for the winter or at a site because the neighbors don't like looking at motorhomes or boats. When you come to a motorhome, they're, they're essentially a large truck. And 13.6 is a legal height. You'll see a lot of bridges over 14 feet. So when you have a 12-foot height, 15-foot height to the peak, median, average and all that neat stuff. This is going back to Gordon Todd days. If you make the height too low, all you're gonna do is have a lot of flat roofs and they look ugly. So I think we need to raise the height. And again, I'm gonna to defer to land planning or even a little more common sense in this. Um, and our language with our square footage, I think needs to be adapted. Because again, Worcester's too diverse. If you told Mary Mead Farm that they could only have a 2000 square foot garage, pole barn, it's not gonna fly. So, um, it's, if it fits in a building envelope, this is just my opinion. The height has to go up so you can have a, a 412, 612 pitch roof with a 14 foot door. The door is the key. Because if a 14 foot door, nothing's bigger than that can't fit in there with a 14 foot door. Every motorhome, every boat, yacht, whatever, you can put it out of sight. Neighbors don't have to see it. As far as the square footage, that's a different argument, but different zones, different districts. If you're, if you're on a quarter acre, I understand. You can't have a 5,000 square foot building. But if you're on 10 acres, you can't restrict them. So it's got to fit the building envelope and it's setbacks, obviously, where I'm not trying to infringe on that. Mm -hmm. I just want to, again, use a little more common sense like we're doing with the sign. And again, if it fits in a building envelope, setbacks, uh, talking to Mr. Labor on the zoning, they don't want to run the zoning every time you want to change a light bulb. So uh, again, yeah. I'll, I'll defer and let Steve chime in on that. I guess it relies on your neighbor. You know, the accessory structures are great. You know, a lot of storage and stuff that uh, really helps the home homeowner, but we have to deal with the consequences of an unhappy neighbor based on the size, you know, and how it disrupts 
the vision or the sight of the neighbors on both sides of the property. So I, this is the touchy issue that, uh, you know, it doesn't bother me if a house in development has it, but we have to look at the neighbor's property value and uh, what they have to see, which, you know, changing the direction uh, could have some problems, but it's something that has to be reviewed and has to look at that, uh, you know, what the township had in the documents from before may be a little outdated because once again, accessory structures maybe have come in in the last 10 to 15 years where everyone is adding to their homes. I, I think our problem is under the growing green ordinance, uh, the people are doing things with the sheds and they've become more than a shed. They have a woman's or a she shack or he shack or something there that uh, a getaway point rather than going to the mountains of the shore, they retreat out to their she shack in the backyard. So it's becoming more popular. So it, it's something that needs to be addressed. Okay. So as you see, we're a little bit uh, muddled in terms of we, we think, so there's sort of not much there. So some of it is starting to say, where should we, where might we consider guidelines? And then within those guidelines, you know, what do we think might be reasonable? What are, I mean, I think some of it is, again, we're, we're trying to catch the, this makes sense. You shouldn't have to go to zoning to do that. But it's, you know, that's a hard one to define a little bit, a little harder, I think, with the accessory structures than it might be in some other areas. So um, we would like, sort of a draft ordinance to work with. But I, what I would say, I guess what I would say is, is there three separate, or in essence, they can be treated as three separate pieces. The first two might be easier to get together quickly. That's fine if it takes a little longer to kind of get the other one together so that we're getting them as they're ready and not waiting to sort of get to the end of the line on that. We can sort of work through them um, timely. Does that, sound, does that sound reasonable, guys? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I believe you've covered it very well. Okay. Fair enough. I'm good. All right. So, um, does anybody have any other business to bring before the board for our work session? I do not. No. Do not. Okay. Then, does anybody have any final public comment? They would. Ed. I will be brief. <laughs> That's okay. Edmore Worcester, uh, in keeping with Steve's premise about uh, being using common sense with uh, illuminated signs, I uh, was here last night to talk about the development, of, potential development of the Palmer property, which is across the street from, a, was, I think there's roughly eight or 10 stores in there. They have one common sign on the corner of 363 and Valley Forge Road. I'd hate to see 10 little illuminated signs along that road and then across the street there'd be whatever there is for Palmer. So if there was some consideration would be given to, if it's a unified uh, shopping center type thing, that there's a common, one common illuminated sign sure. of some height and, and the like, as opposed to every store having or facility having the ability to put their own up. Okay, so thanks. Thanks, Ed, appreciate it. Does anybody else have any public comment for the board? Seeing none, then motion to adjourn. All right, folks, just give us a minute or so and we'll get started on the business meeting. <laughs>